Hey, what's up guys? My name is Dylan and I'm a cycling coach here at Carmichael Training Systems in Brevard, North Carolina. Today we're going to be discussing fasted training and we're going to take a look at the science to determine whether or not training fasted will improve your cycling performance. I'll also share a little bit of my own experience with fasted training and how I failed miserably at it, so stick around for that. Fasted training has been growing in popularity amongst cyclists, and the theory is that if you train fasted, for example, if you go out in the morning on a ride without eating breakfast, that your body will be more reliant on fat as a fuel source, and over time, your body will be able to better utilize fat instead of carbohydrates. Potential benefits of this could be not having to rely as heavily on carbohydrates like gels or drink mixes during a race, and therefore perform better towards the end of the race or avoid the dreaded bonk. Let's see what the science has to say about fasted training. So first let's make it clear that it's pretty much unanimous that carbohydrates improve endurance exercise performance. One study out of the Nutrition Research Center at Maastricht University took 19 endurance trained cyclists and had them perform a 60 minute time trial after consuming a carbohydrate solution and a placebo on separate occasions. The results were a 2.3% performance increase in the carb fed group over the placebo. Note that for the placebo test, the riders weren't actually fasted, and carbohydrates still improved their performance. Another study published in the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise looked at carbohydrate consumption four hours before a 95-minute interval session using 10 participants. When subjects consumed a high-carb meal four hours before the session, performance increased 15% over not consuming carbs. So not consuming a carb-rich meal four hours before exercise is getting closer to what we might consider fasted training. These are individual studies, but if we look at a meta-analysis of 88 randomized crossover studies on carbohydrate consumption and endurance performance, the conclusion is that carbohydrates do show a large benefit. So it's clear that carbohydrates do improve your performance. This is something that intuitively most of us already knew, as we wouldn't line up on race day without having a meal. However, the question is, will skipping the pre-workout meal before training elicit a performance benefit on race day? A study published in the Journal of Applied Physiology took 20 subjects and had them train in either a fasted or carb-fed state. Both groups saw the same increase in VO2 max and 60-minute time trial performance. The fasted group did show an increase in fat utilization and prevented the exercise-induced drop in blood glucose. However, this was in a two-hour fasted test. So it seems that fasted riders got better at riding fasted. Okay, great, well this doesn't tell us a whole lot about a race scenario, unless we infer that the end of a really long race, such as an ultra endurance event, is similar to a fasted state because your blood glucose will be depleted, much as it would be when you're fasting. A study published in the same journal showed that with a very similar setup of 20 subjects, that the fasted group did show a reduction in exercise-induced glycogen breakdown. Just like with the other study, there was no difference in the improvement in VO2 max between the carb-fed and fasted group. A review published in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sport reiterated these findings, concluding that despite reduced reliance on carbohydrate utilization, there is no clear evidence that fasted training increases performance, and this conclusion seems to be echoed in multiple reviews. So it seems that fasted training doesn't improve your performance, but could possibly reduce your reliance on carbohydrates as a fuel source, which could be beneficial in a long race. Given that carbohydrate availability does give us a performance boost, it seems that we would want to be strategic when choosing what rides to do fasted. We certainly want to be well fed for our high intensity interval sessions because we want to get the most out of the workout. So perhaps our lower intensity endurance rides are the best rides to do fasted. Related to, but slightly different than the fasted theory of training, is the sleep low theory. Sleep low suggests that you go to bed carb depleted after a high intensity interval session, and then do a fasted ride the next day at lower intensity. It sounds agonizing to go to bed on an empty stomach after a hard workout, and then wake up the next day and do another workout with an even emptier stomach, but the sleep low theory does have some science to back it up. A study published in the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise examined the sleep low method by taking 21 triathletes and splitting them into an intervention group or a control group. The intervention group would do a high intensity interval session which would deplete their glycogen stores and then restrict carbohydrates overnight to induce low carbohydrate availability 
in the following morning's low intensity training session. The control group would perform the same workouts, but their carbohydrate consumption was spread evenly throughout the day. The result was that the sleep low group improved their 10K running time, submaximal cycling efficiency, and time to exhaustion at 150% of peak aerobic power, while the control group saw no significant improvement. A similar study out of LJMU came to the same conclusion, doing a very similar intervention with 11 trained cyclists in either a sleep low group or a control group testing 20K time trial performance. They found that the sleep low group improved their time trial performance by 3.2% while the control group saw no significant change. In the conclusion, they implied that this strategy may work best right before the taper period of a big race. Some riders may train fasted with the intention of losing weight, assuming that more fat is being used during the workout and therefore more fat is being lost. However, this doesn't seem to be the case. A study published in the International Society of Sports Nutrition took 20 young female subjects and put them into a fasted group or a fed group, performing one hour of aerobic exercise three times per week for four weeks. Both groups lost weight, however, there was no significant difference in the amount of weight lost for the fasted or fed. So it seems that fasted training may be beneficial if we go about it in a strategic way. Certainly not all of our rides can be fasted. For example, high intensity work needs to be fed by carbohydrates. However, if you want to experiment with fasted training, I suggest doing it on lower intensity endurance days. I think the key here is to experiment. As an ultra endurance racer myself, I was very enticed by fasted training and the idea of saving my glycogen stores during a long race. In my brief experience with fasted training, however, I absolutely hated it. I'm the kind of person who craves breakfast in the morning, and hunger usually wakes me up without any need for an alarm. Going out for a ride without eating was close to torture, and all I could think about during my ride was food. When I got back, I was so hungry that I could eat the whole fridge. Any weight that I potentially lost from fasting was gained back and then some. However, there are some people who simply don't crave food in the morning. One of my collegiate teammates who I roomed with would have to force feed himself before a morning ride. For people like this, I can see fasted training working really well. I'll probably do a little bit more experimenting with fasted training and sleeping low to see if I can find something that works for me. I don't recommend fasted training to my athletes unless they ask about it and they're willing to experiment to see if it works for them. Have you tried fasted training? Let me know what your experience was and if it worked for you in the comments. If you like this video, give it a like and share it with someone who's curious about fasted training. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more coaching content and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Interested in getting a coach? Shoot me an email at djohnson at trainwright.com.